Today on CityCast Boise, the race for the next Boise mayor is officially on. The Meridian Library District gets a big boost, and the legislative session is inching closer to an end. It's been a busy news week, so I'm getting up to speed with George Prentice from Boise State Public Radio. Plus, George makes me jealous talking about the star-studded Sun Valley Film Festival. It's Friday, March 24th. I'm Frankie Barnhill filling in for Emma Arnold, and this is what Boise's talking about. Hey, George, happy Friday. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for the invite. Thanks for being here. Okay, let's dig into uh, this first big story about Boise politics, which is that uh, former Boise police chief Mike Masterson has officially thrown his hat in the ring to challenge uh, Mayor Lauren McLean. He is the first official challenger to Lauren McLean, uh, who's running for Mm reelection. Remind us of his story, uh, Mike Masterson. He was chief under former mayor Dave Beter. What's his what's his reputation like? Uh, Well, you know, I interviewed him a lot. I covered Mike Masterson a lot. And in the final interview I had with him, I had to dig it out. Now, keep in mind that he retired over eight years ago. A long time ago, really. Uh, He retired in January of 2015, announced it in 2014. But the first sentence I, I wrote in what I called the exit interview was this. I'm quoting myself here. (laughs) Second guessing Mike Masterson is a fool's errand. Yes, he toes a very hard line when it comes to the letter of the law, but Boise's 36th chief of police is also an agent of change. So I could go all day and night on Mike Masterson, but a a couple of bullet points. Keep in mind that he came into the department in a department in crisis. In 2005, it was awful. There was an incident involving a young man who was off his meds. He should have been on a mental hold. He charged police and police shot and killed him. And this instituted Boise's first ombudsman. Um, There was significant change to the department, and it just so happens that they were about to hire this guy named Mike Masterson from Madison, Wisconsin, another college town, to come in. What people, I don't think, really knew about him was how, and here comes that word, progressive he was. And I don't even know if he would embrace that. But he had little to no interest in pursuing charges against men, women, and children who did not have a home. He had little interest in uh, people who were drinking outside of, you know, tailgating outside of Boise State, in spite of the fact that police used to ticket them all the time. That said, he's also the police chief who brought in military styled, yes, you know, a, a weaponry, MRAPs, right? Right. Um, so he pushed hard uh, against guns on campus. And when the legislature did not allow him to testify in front of a committee, he walked across the street and, and spoke in front of a church at the Episcopal Church. And so he is a really interesting candidate. And I, this is the candidate Lauren McLean did not want to face. And that's why we're having you on the podcast, because only you can quote yourself. And it is legit because you you followed uh, his story uh, way back when. And here he is reemerging yeah. as a political candidate um, and as the challenger to Lauren McLean. What do you think the narrative of this race would be if it's if it's these two? Of course, there's many months and more people could get yeah. into the race. But what do you think the, the narrative will look like? Well, You do have a police department in crisis. You can paint it any way you want, but it is a police department in crisis. It has an interim chief. There is an independent investigation. You had someone very high up in the organization that recently retired and then days after he retired, turned out that he was a flaming racist. Captain Matt Bringleson, former Captain Matt Bringleson. We have a significant issue with policing. And Mike Masterson has not been shy. He wrote an op-ed for the Statesman uh, in uh, in December. 
Uh, he has not been shy about this. It's really interesting to note that the treasurer of his campaign is former Boise Council President Marianne Jordan. That is a, a shot across the bow. So does he attract, let's just say, conservatives? I think he does. He's a cop. Could he attract moderates? Absolutely. People know his record. Far left of center is where he might be weakest. That said, he has had uh, the best story. Mike Masterson's story I can give you is in 2009, George Nickel. Mm -hmm. Now, here was a former vet, PTSD, um, and he was off his meds one night. And Boise police were called to an apartment building and he came out and he pointed the barrel of a gun at a cop. So it was barrel to barrel. Now, in, in a number of American cities, we know how that ends. Yeah. Right now, George Nickel was arrested, but Mike Masterson reached out to him in jail. They became really good friends. And his biggest advocate was the chief of police in court. And then George Nickel actually uh, turned out that he became an advocate for other vets and working with PTSD and working with the police force. Mike Masterson's narrative is best when these stories are uh, can be told. And that is where Lauren McLean's, I think, biggest weakness is, is like, what are her, her stories? Well, her stories are are challenging, right? Uh, you know, uh, so it's it's going to be really interesting. I do want to point out in that that statesman editorial that you referred to, we'll we'll link it in the show notes. He, he basically was criticizing Mayor McLean for uh, being a proponent of the investigation into whether or not there's systemic racism in the Boise Police Department. After we learned again that former Captain Matt Bringleson uh, was, you know, posting racist remarks on a white supremacist website and he was a leader in the department for 20 he was in the department for 24 years i think it was and many of those the mike masterson years exactly including under masterson so you know in his editorial he was basically uh questioning or challenging um mclean for um you know casting aspersions i think is how he put it yep. but the question is i mean Asking about racial bias in policing is an important question. The fact that the, the city council and McLean are doing this, it seems like it's something that at least, you know, people who voted her into place um, would at least would like to see at least this question be answered because of this Bringleson story that really, really threw people for a loop. Exactly. I, I cannot read this report soon enough. Yeah. Um, now, we know that it is going to wrap up very quickly just based on the amount that was budgeted for it, which is to say how many hours right. uh, were going to be conducted. But politically, what was Mike Masterson doing in that op-ed? He was shoring up rank and file. Yeah. I think the mayor wants this report to come out as soon as possible. Now, let's assume that this report comes out and says there is not you know, racism. The, the racism doesn't run uh, wide and deep in, in the department. Um, I... I don't. I think you're going to have a fair amount of folks who are going to be skeptical of that conclusion, but I think that that's a possibility because they said the scope would not go any further than Bringleson. And you noted this already, shot across the bow, I think is how you put it. You know, interesting, yeah. as you said, to see former uh, city council president Marianne Jordan, a Democrat, step out as Masterson's campaign treasurer. He's talking about running as an independent. Of course, the mayoral race is nonpartisan, but we we know, you know, generally speaking, where people's politics are. Um, mm -hmm. So what do you think is up with that? Is there anything to read into to that. I think it's fair to say that Marianne Jordan was closer to an acolyte of Dave Beter than Lauren McLean. Uh, that's not to say that she she didn't leave on her terms. I think she could have stayed on, on council as long as she wanted, but she was on council for quite a long time through much of that transition. Um, and so if she was a fan of Dave Beter, who handpicked Mike Masterson, that you can connect those dots somewhat. That said, a Democrat is a Democrat. Right. Right. And Marianne Jordan is a Democrat. Laura McLean is a Democrat. Uh, Mike Masterson, who knows what he's registered as. Um, but I think that there'd be some conservatives who would look at his record who would say, hmm, he's not exactly my type of conservative. So, um, gosh, he does check quite a few boxes because 
this will be an independent race, we need to expect a number of other candidates. And I've heard of some former legislators who were interested in throwing their hat into the ring. I think Mike Masterson announcing this soon actually chills a couple of, mm, of candidates. Sure. But we still have to assume that there's probably going to be four or five, including a couple of, well, I, I won't say the word, a couple of folks who just do it because they like to see their name in print. Um, and then it could well be a runoff, much like how Lauren McLean beat Dave Peter. Gosh, yeah. Great reminder that Lauren McLean won uh, after a runoff. Her time in office has been incredibly fraught. Uh, yeah. No fault of her own, at least at the start, because she came into office right when COVID hit, basically, um, yeah. and has had a lot of cr criticism around that. I will say last week, we talked about this a little bit uh, on our Friday show, Mayor McLean coming out against the Ada County commissioners who declined to reauthorize funding for uh, temporary housing for medically fragile people experiencing homelessness with interfaith sanctuary. Um, and uh, she e evoked Portland and San Francisco as these cities that, you know, Boise doesn't want to become around <laughs> homelessness, which was fascinating and also felt like a little bit of positioning that I don't know if she'll regret that or if that's going to be part of strategy moving forward. Yeah, I think it's fair to say it'll be very interesting where money comes into this race. I think we're I think it's fair to say that there will be money that will be against Lauren McLean as opposed to for Mike Masterson. There are folks who just don't like Lauren McLean and never will like Lauren McLean. You can imagine what those mailers will look like, right? Absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. you know, pictures of Portland and San Francisco. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, and Mike Masterson, all he, all he would do is just step back, right? Say, hey, that's not me. That's not my money. Those are my supporters. Okay, George, before we dig into the next topic, I uh, just want to give our listeners a quick update on a few bills that have been in the legislature. Uh, so many bills, so hard to keep track of them all. Uh, we are coming in, knock on wood, into the home stretch of the legislative session. So here's one update. Earlier this month, we spoke with Boise Democratic Senator Allie Robbie about her rental fee bill that establishes reasonable limits on what landlords can charge for late fees, other kinds of fees like that. that that was signed into law by Governor Brad Little, so that's officially uh, on the books. We've also been talking about property tax relief, which uh, Idahoans have been asking for for years, and there's a proposal waiting for the governor to sign. Idaho is also just one step away from bringing back the firing squad for death penalty cases. We've talked about that a couple times. That's waiting for the governor's yes or no as well. So be sure to subscribe to our Hey Boise newsletter for more updates on where things stand with the legislature's final days this session. Okay, pivoting back to some more local politics. Um, also this week, we saw the Ada County Commissioners have some uh, very long public meetings uh, at the Ada County Courthouse. These were around the question of whether or not to dissolve the Meridian Library District. Uh, what stands out to you about this? Well, the politics. We have to go back to the fact that uh, the Ada County Commission are, uh, there's only three people on this commission. They're all not just Republicans, but very conservative Republicans. And so it would be pretty easy for them to, to say absolutely and give these people a voice. More often than not, in hearings like this, it is the legislator, it, it, it's the lawmaker who has to rein people back in, say, hey, you're off topic, right? We're talking about the possibility of dissolution of, uh, of the district. Right. When in fact, a lot of the questions kept veering back to content and what's on the shelf, et cetera. So I found that really interesting. But the numbers are the numbers. And it was overwhelming in favor of the district. Hand, get your hands off my district. I, I, I had a pretty robust debate with a colleague of mine uh, who covered this event. And she said, oh, my gosh, you know, this is, you know, what if they get their way? And, and, and my argument was, let's have at it. Put it on the ballot. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, at least given the number of people who showed up yeah. to uh, protest against it and to come out strongly uh, against the, the concerned citizens of Meridian, uh, they are the ones who brought this petition forward. And they've been pretty angry for a while now about library leadership and their 
saying that they allow books and other materials on their shelves that target, you know, sexualizing minors. Of course, a lot of the books that they're most concerned about are uh, topics around LGBTQ children and also people of color. I think one other part that was fascinating, too, was uh, the fact checking that was constantly going on yeah. where the concerned citizens of Meridian are saying, we don't want to get rid of the library. We just want to get rid of the leadership. But the method that they're using, the, the legal tool to dissolve it, would literally get rid of everything, right? I mean, right. Play that out. It, it's dissolved. I, if you look at the language, even all of the books would be disposed of. Um, any amount of uh, money, if you will, in the budget or sale of assets, et cetera, would go into the county's general fund. It's a mess. Of course, you have to have a library district. You've, you, you've got, uh, I think, three libraries in the Meridian District, at least. Um, you have X number of employees. I mean, play this out. It's a mess. Yeah. Some of the testimony, you know, we heard um, a lot of young people, a lot of teens. Uh, one young woman stood out to me saying, you know, I was really bullied last year. The library was my refuge. I don't know if I would be here if the library did not exist. Um, we also heard from uh, Meridian Councilman Luke Kavanagh, who right. was very fascinating because he's conservative. And he said, basically, hey, I have some issues with some of the things on the shelves. One time my kid checked out a movie that I wasn't happy with. Uh, but really, then I thought about it after having a conversation with the library director. And hey, that was on me as the parent to say, uh, to be the one who's there with my kid to say yes or no to that that selection. So I guess I'm wondering, what do you think this says about Meridian, a suburb that's more conservative than Boise? What do you think it says about this topic and Meridian's politics right now? Meridian's in flux. Uh, when you look at uh, some of the legislators that they have um, turned away and uh, sent uh, some new folks uh, to the state house, uh, uh, Meridian is certainly right of center. Their uh, management of growth is not uh, ideal. I think. I think it's catching a lot of people by surprise, and they're disappointed. Meridian was just a bedroom community for years. Well, no, it's, it's it's the center of the Treasure Valley. It's not the city of Boise. Meridian is the center of the Treasure Valley. Um, so what does it say about Meridian? I think that we're going to see a lot more. Uh, what's to keep concerned citizens of Meridian? And what a general name for an organization. Oh, my gosh. What's yeah. to keep them <laughs> from just cherry picking an issue every three months and, 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 and insisting that it go on the ballot? Yeah, I think this is where we're heading. Okay, George, well, let's wrap up with something fun. Uh, the Sun Valley Film Festival, you're going this year, you go pretty much every year, right? What, what's up? Uh, what are you excited about this year? I am the luckiest guy I know. Um, they invite me to come and uh, more often than not participate, which uh, usually means uh, some interviews, but in this particular case, an interview on a stage in a big theater. Um, so this time last year, I was uh, getting some FaceTime with Amy Poehler and Woody Harrelson who was in Leah Schreiber. That was pretty cool. So jealous. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, my <laughs> selfies are pretty cool. <laughs> so this year, Josh Brolin. Oh, wow. Um, at, right. Uh, everything from the Coen brothers, uh, No Country for Old Men to the Avengers to yeah. playing George W. I mean, you know, uh, so... Uh, of course, he started out, you know, in the Goonies as as a teen actor, and and everything from there to here. Yeah. Um, also, uh, oh my gosh, uh, Emilio Estevez. We know him from the Brat Pack, but now he's a producer director, and of course, the Mighty Ducks. And uh, there's a pretty good rumor circling that his his old man will be there as well. <gasps> what? Yeah. President Bartlett. Hello. <laughs> President Bartlett. I'm just on a rewatch of Western right now. So I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, I could quote it. So uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. I am really interested. They, they, they usually have such a strong lineup of docs. And this year, there's some really good ones. There's a film called King Cole from the folks who produced Navalny and Fire of Love. Mm. And this takes us to Appalachia. Oh, cool. And, uh, and cold wow. country. Yeah, that looks good. And uh, so a number of documentaries and uh, um, 
Uh, the, oh, oh, the, there's this one movie called, I think it's called Flamin' Hot, which is the true story, I did not know this, of a Frito-Lay janitor who actually came up with the idea of Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Oh, my gosh. Uh, what a great <laughs> the idea origin for movie. story. And Tony Shalhoub <laughs> is in it. And uh, I think that like, that sounds pretty darn good. But, but uh, let's talk a tree fort, Frankie. Because over the years, I've always asked you, okay, what should I avoid? What What's my must-see, must-attend? So uh, I've got two big questions for you. Okay. Uh, is there a particular musical artist or artists that you absolutely have to see this year? I'm really excited that they booked Margot Price. She's just got an amazing voice, and I think her performance on the main stage uh, will be really fun. That's tonight um, at the main stage. So I'll be out there with the mud and the geese uh, because <laughs> the main stage this year for the first time is at Julia Davis Park, of course. And then um, Cautious Clay is an artist that I've loved for many years, and he's also a headliner uh, booked to play the main stage. Um, and you know what? There's also some, you know, Tree Fort, there's just so many different things. Of course, there's a million things you could do. Uh, it's a choose your own adventure festival for sure. And I do have a few of those top artists, but I also have like things I want to do, like, you know? That's my next question. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. One of the things I want to do actually is go to the El Cor Shrine on two, on Saturday uh, around two o'clock and watch a wedding. Oh, right. Uh, we spoke with this couple a couple days ago that uh, they're getting married at Tree Fort because they love it so much. They got uh, engaged at Tree Fort last year and now they're getting married and they're inviting anybody at the festival to just hop in. So I don't know them personally, uh, but they've invited me and everybody else. So is, will this be a reception? Is the, is it the ceremony? What what will this be? It's the ceremony. It's the ceremony. Wow. They're doing the ceremony at the El Cora Shrine. Exactly. Uh, and they'll have some music going before and after. And they've got cake and champagne for anybody who wants to celebrate with them. And then uh, uh, the, the bride, she says, okay, and then I want to get back out there and go do tree fort. So that's wow. that's just such a quintessential tree fort thing to happen. <laughs> do you think she'll be walking around in a, in a wedding gown? So she has a vintage uh, white dress. And uh, so I think it's a little bit more festival ready. So she's not going to have to even really make much of a change in her in her uh, costume. But yeah, she's got a white dress for her for her wedding. So that and then, oh, I don't know, probably go to drag brunch on Sunday, um, eat some good food see some friends and yeah just enjoy just enjoy the art scene in Boise which is one of the things that you know I've loved for all these years and Tree Fort really you know brings it all together into one one five five day long thing it'll be really interesting in Julia Davis uh <laughs> considering the weather <laughs> oh my gosh yeah I mean everybody's been always looking at the forecast and and paying close attention and hey watch out for the geese because they're crazy <laughs> That's my final <laughs> note. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, George, for wrapping up the news with me this week. Uh, I hope you have a great time in Sun Valley next week. I most certainly will. As always, I'm listening. Thanks for the invite. So after wrapping up two nights of public hearings on Wednesday, the Ada County Commissioners plan to deliberate whether to put the petition to dissolve the Meridian Library District on the ballot at their next meeting on March 29th. Meanwhile, the district is preparing for their May 16th election when voters will get a chance to elect two new members to the board. And here's a couple more updates from the Capitol this week where lawmakers hope to wrap up very soon. Anyone with a minor, nonviolent conviction on their record that's at least five years old can get the crime removed from their record. That's after Boise's Democratic minority leader, Alana Rubel, championed the so-called Clean Slate Bill. And Governor Brad Little is celebrating after his Idaho launch program passed both chambers. The program will give grants to students pursuing in-demand jobs if they stay in the state to pursue their career. All 
right, thanks for listening to CityCast Boise. The show is produced by Evelyn Avitia, host Emma Arnold, and me, Frankie Barnhill. Big thanks to AK Al Moomin for helping us out this week. Blake Hunter writes our Hey Boise newsletter. Our music is by All the Kimonos. And local band Up Is The Down Is The, who's playing Tree Fort today, Friday, at 4 o'clock at El Cora Shrine. We'll be back on Monday. Have a great weekend, Boise. Thank you.